Let this represent the adult US population. Around 77% of these Americans consume dietary supplements. And with this percentage only growing, it really is no surprise that the US supplement industry is predicted to reach a staggering 61.8 billion by 2025. The concept is great. Don't eat enough fruit? Take a multivitamin. Want to build muscle? Have a whey protein shake. Not enough sunlight? Vitamin D. But why stop there? I want you to write it down. Garcinia Cambogia. Because it may be the simple solution you've been looking for to bust your body fat for good. Now I've got the number one miracle in a bottle to burn your fat. Lightning in a bottle. It's a miracle flower to fight fat. But wait, this whole time your bank balance has been declining, supplement after supplement is being exposed as a dud, and you still can't seem to work out which pill is causing those frequent stomach aches. But there lies the problem. You brought all of these supplements for a reason and don't want to stop taking any in fear of losing out on the benefits that they provide. According to the science, fitness influencers, and shady marketing, that is. Or maybe you're in the minority that are well aware of these problems and have decided to stay clear of the supplement industry. But still, you may grow curious. A quick search on YouTube and you come across a knowledgeable guy and see what he has to say. Omega-6, omega-3, evening primrose oil, vitamin C, vitamin E, CoQ10, a green tea extract, a multivitamin, Athlean RX1, Athlean R uh, RX2, RX3. And as you're not planning on selling your organs to buy a similar stack, you look at the next video down. L-arginine, vitamin C, omega-3, multivitamin, Z-M-A, this, C-L-A, protein, free workout, quadricarn. I bet you're now confused. I know I was. So what can you do? Over the past month, I have studied 10 of the most credible fitness writers and YouTubers who have much more knowledge than me on the topic and have identified a fascinating trend of 7, maybe 8, which the majority of them personally take, recommend and believe have promising science to back them up. But be warned, there are some certain issues which you are going to want to know about. What is a dietary supplement? Defined as something that is added to something else in order to improve it or complete it. By definition, it is the least important part of any nutrition plan and actually an unnecessary part. The trouble is, in an industry plagued by the illusion of complexity, your perception of their importance is probably massively skewed. Having said that, supplements can be beneficial if taken for the following reasons. For convenience, to help correct a deficiency, or for a negligible performance boost. One of the most popular supplements which you may want to take for all three of these reasons is whey protein. Not only is it one of the cheapest sources of protein, but it is also quick to make and tastes great. Every single person seems to recognize whey as a staple of a good supplementation plan. Closely followed on everyone's top three list is creatine monohydrate. Its function is to help replenish energy, which we use at the beginning of intense physical activity. Optimizing creatine levels can improve your performance, allowing you to get in a few more reps, which can equate to more muscle growth over time. A study found that supplementing resulted in a 5-15% to increase in maximum strength and power, which is pretty good if you ask me. Every single person seemed to strongly approve of creatine supplementation for both its efficacy and low price. Maintaining a balanced omega-3 to 6 ratio is extremely important in providing an array of health benefits. However, the modern diet contains little omega-3. As our bodies cannot produce it, this becomes problematic. Supplementing with an omega-3 or fish oil is a highly convenient way to improve your omega-3 to 6 ratio, as every single person seems to agree. Around 42% of Americans are deficient in vitamin D, a vitamin essential for ensuring good general health. So it should be no surprise that everyone seems to approve of vitamin D supplementation with most taking religiously. Caffeine is a central nervous system stimulant which is able to provide an array of health benefits including increased power output, reduced fatigue and an increase in wakefulness. Everyone recognised caffeine as a supplement worth consideration. 
It is important to note that the reason Omar stopped taking caffeine was because most stimulants over rely on trying to make you excited, kind of cause a peak and crest in terms of your energy. This is something which everyone suggests you should be aware of, which is why if you do use caffeine, you regularly cycle off of it. Taking a multivitamin is often a good idea as it acts almost as an insurance policy alongside a balanced diet. The general view on multivitamins was positive, with some believing them to be useful. However, choosing to only supplement with the specific vitamins that benefit their diets the most. PictureFit argued that they are for the most part a waste of money, as they often contain insignificant quantities of each vitamin and we get more than enough nutrients from a balanced diet. Although most people do not have perfectly balanced diets, therefore, as Jeff recommends, it may be best to take one athlete formulated multivitamin per day. Studies on citrulline malate suggest it helps you increase training volume and reduce fatigue. It can also be used for increasing vascularity, allowing you to somewhat appear bigger in the gym, something which I believe appeals to a lot of people. As for the general opinion, everyone seems to have the same view, in the sense that they all believe citrulline malate can be useful. However, it's not in the same tier as creatine. I believe the supplement's status is elevated by its visual effects, making this definitely one to consider. Beta alanine is often the most prominent ingredient in a pre-workout and is responsible for the harmless tingling feeling known as parastasia. Studies have shown that beta alanine does seem to increase muscular endurance, so it may be useful in drop set training or endurance training. Everyone has spoken favourably of beta alanine, and depending on your goals, I believe it should be a consideration. Had this video been made 10 years ago, BCAAs would probably be at the top of the list, but over the years more and more research has been carried out, proving that most people do not benefit much from supplementing with these, as they can be found in most animal-based protein sources, including whey. Almost everyone seems to agree that these are very rarely beneficial, and therefore you should probably not waste your money on them. Now there are many of these on the market, with the promise to increase testosterone levels and therefore allow you to gain more muscle. Yet the very few of them which actually do raise testosterone levels slightly do not have any significant effect on your strength or muscle mass. Do not be fooled by the shady marketing and misleading science which promotes them with steroid-like effects. This is a perfect example of profit-hungry companies leveraging the public's desire for quick and easy results all so they can sell their useless snake oil. But still, you may have previously taken a supplement like this and experienced accelerated results. What is going on there? Well, this is one of the main reasons why these fraudulent companies are only getting bigger and bigger. The placebo effect is in this case an unexplained phenomenon where the supplement provides a beneficial effect which cannot be attributed to the supplement itself. In other words, someone benefits from taking an ineffective supplement. This has been used in science for quite a long time and has made some people very, very wealthy. For example, Franz Mesmer. In the 18th century, many of the healing methods involve pain and suffering. Looking to do something gentler, Mesmer opened a practice where he would use magnets to heal people of various mild ailments. He would call his method animal magnetism. At first, he experienced modest success. However, as the word spread, more and more people would enter his practice. So naturally, he thought it was time to up the showmanship, brought a wizard-like robe, a metal wand, and hired people to play harmonic music as he would mesmerize his patients. This only added to his success. Of course, he was not actually healing them, but rather using the placebo effect to convince them that they were cured for a tidy fee of course. And this is exactly how many supplement companies make their money today. Shady marketing, questionable science, and the desire for shortcuts all used to mesmerize you into repeatedly buying useless supplements. Supplements will not give you a massive boost, but they may accelerate and aid your progress ever so slightly. While I'm not an expert and formed my opinion, mostly based on these 10 people's opinions, what was extremely interesting is that they all seem to take or approve of these five supplements, providing some high quality antidotal evidence that they may be worth buying. Before you decide on the supplements that you'll be taking, it is important to make your own informed decision. Every single one of these people advocate using examine.com 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 for researching supplements, and I encourage you to do the same. And always remember,
These videos take me a long time to make, so you don't know how appreciative I am of you watching till the end. If you would like more content like this, please like, subscribe, and turn notifications on. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.